Hello everyone and welcome to Sally and Bites. Let's work out these NCERT problems. Flow of Control Part 1 for CBSC Class 11 Computer Science. Question 1. What is the difference between else and elif constructive if statement? Answer. In Python, the if, else, and elif, short for else if, are used for creating conditional statements to control the flow of your code based on certain conditions. Here's how they differ. If statement, this is the basic conditional statement. It checks a condition and if it's true, the associated block of code is executed. If the condition is false, the code block is skipped. Elif statement, short for else if, this is used when you want to check multiple conditions in a sequence. When the if condition is false, Python will check the conditions associated with any elif statements. If any of those conditions are true, the code block associated with that elif will be executed, and the rest of the elif and else blocks are skipped. If none of the elif conditions are true, and there's an else block, its code will be executed. Else statement, this is used as a final option when none of the preceding conditions, if and elif, are true. If the if and elif conditions are false, the code block associated with the else statement is executed. Let's see an example. In this example, if x is greater than 0, the first block of code will be executed. If x is not greater than 0 but is less than 0, the second block will be executed. If neither of those conditions is true, the last block, associated with else, will be executed. You can check the output for positive, negative, and zero values on the right side of the screen. Question 2. What is the purpose of range, function? Give one example. Answer. The range, function in Python is used to generate a sequence of numbers within a specified range. It's commonly used in loops when you want to iterate a certain number of times or iterate over a sequence of numbers. The range function can take up to three arguments, start, stop, and step. The start argument specifies the starting value of the sequence, inclusive. The stop argument specifies the ending value of the sequence, exclusive. The step argument specifies the step size between numbers in the sequence. By default, the start value is 0 and the step value is 1. Here's an example of how the range function works. In the first example, the range 10 generates a sequence of numbers starting from 0, inclusive, up to 10, exclusive, with a step size of 1. The loop then iterates through each value in the sequence and prints it. You can also provide the start and step arguments explicitly. Start value equals 0, stop value equals 10. 10 not included. So stop value equals 9. Step value equals 1. Now, look at example 2. In this case, the range 2, 11, 2 generates a sequence of even numbers starting from 2, inclusive, up to 11, exclusive, with a step size of 2. Start value equals 2, stop value equals 11. 11 not included. So 10. Step value equals 2. The loop then iterates through the sequence and prints the even numbers. The range function is useful for various scenarios, such as iterating over a specific range of indices in a list or performing a certain action a certain number of times. Question 3. Differentiate between break and continue statements using examples. In Python, both the break and continue statements are used to control the flow of loops, but they serve different purposes. Let's differentiate between them using examples. Break statement. The break statement is used to exit the current loop prematurely, regardless of whether the loop's condition is still satisfied or not. Example of break statement. Now look at the Python code of break statement. In this example, we have a for loop that iterates over the values from 1 to 10, inclusive. Inside the loop, there is an if statement that checks if the value of i is equal to 5. If i is indeed 5, the code inside the if block is executed. 
breaking the loop is printed. The break statement is encountered, which causes the loop to terminate prematurely. As a result, only the numbers 1 to 4 are printed before the loop breaks. When I becomes 5, the loop is exited immediately, and no further iterations take place. Now, look at the continue statement on the right side of the screen. The continue statement is used to skip the current iteration of a loop and move on to the next iteration. Example of continue statement. Now look at the Python code of the continue statement. We again have a for loop that iterates over the values from 1 to 5, inclusive. Inside the loop, there is an if statement that checks if the value of i is equal to 3. If i is indeed 3, the code inside the if block is executed. Skipping 3 is printed. The continue statement is encountered, which skips the rest of the current iteration. However, if i is not 3, the code inside the if block is skipped and the value of i is printed. And now, look at the output. As you can see, the continue statement caused the loop to skip printing 3 and proceed to the next iteration, printing the other numbers as usual. Question 4. What is an infinite loop? Give one example. An infinite loop in Python is a loop that runs indefinitely, continuously executing the loop body without ever stopping. This can happen when the loop's exit condition is not properly defined or when the condition is always evaluated as true. Here's an example of an infinite loop in Python. In the first example, the while loop's condition is true, which is always true. As a result, the loop will keep executing the print statement endlessly, displaying the message this is an infinite loop repeatedly in the console. In the second example, the loop starts with count equal to zero, and the condition is count less than five. However, the loop never modifies the value of count, so it will always remain less than five. As a result, the loop's condition is always true, and the loop will keep executing the print statement repeatedly, leading to an infinite loop. To stop it press Ctrl plus C. To prevent an infinite loop in this case, you would need to update the value of count within the loop body so that the condition eventually becomes false and the loop terminates. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 1. Now look at the Python code. In this code, we're using a while loop to repeatedly execute a block of code as long as the condition, a, a greater than 100 holds true. Here's how it works. In line 1, a, is assigned the value of 110. The loop starts with the condition, a, a greater than 100. First iteration starts here. Since, a, is indeed greater than 100, 110 is greater than 100, the loop body is executed. In line 3, the value of, a, which is currently 110, is printed to the console. In line 4, a, is decremented by 2 using the a minus equals 2 statement. That is, a equals a minus 2. So, a equals 110 minus 2 is equal to 108. After this line, a becomes 108. The loop goes back to the condition check. Second iteration starts. Now, the condition, a greater than 100 is still true. 108 greater than 100, so the loop body executes again. The value of a, which is currently 108, is printed to the console. a is decremented by 2 again, making a equal to 106. The loop continues with the condition check. Third iteration starts. a is still greater than 100, 106 greater than 100, so the loop body runs again. The value of a, which is now 106, is printed. a is decremented by 2 once more, making a equal to 104. The loop continues checking the condition. Fourth iteration starts. a is still greater than 100, 104 greater than 100, so the loop body executes again. The value of a, which is 104, is printed. A is decremented to 102. The loop continues to check the condition. 
fifth iteration starts. A is still greater than 100, 102 greater than 100, so the loop body runs. The value of A, which is now 102, is printed. A is decrement to 100. Now, in the sixth iteration, after the decrement, the value of A is no longer greater than 100, 100 greater than 100 is false. So, the condition A, a greater than 100 becomes false, and the loop terminates. Overall, the code prints the values 110, 108, 106, 104, and 102, all decreasing by 2 in each iteration, and then stops when A reaches 100. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 2. Now, look at the code. The range, 20, 30, 2, function generates a sequence of numbers starting from 20, inclusive, up to, but not including, 30, with a step size of 2. This means it will generate the numbers 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. The for loop iterates through each value in the generated sequence. Inside the loop, the print of i statement prints the current value of i. So, when you run this code, it will output 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. Each number in the range is printed on a separate line, as the loop iterates over the sequence of numbers produced by range function. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 3. This code uses a for loop to iterate through each character in the string country. Here's what the code does. In line 1. The string India is assigned to the variable country. In line 2, the for loop iterates through each character in the string country. In line 3, inside the loop, the print of i statement prints the current character, represented by the variable i. When you run this code, it will output I N D I A. Each character in the string is printed on a separate line as the loop iterates through the characters in the order they appear in the string India. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 4. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, I is initialized to 0 and sum is initialized to 0. In line 2, the while loop starts and continues as long as i is less than 9. In line 3. Inside the loop. The if statement checks if the current value of i is divisible by 4 with no remainder, i mod 4 equals 0. In line 4. If the condition is true, the value of i is added to the sum. In line 5. i is then increment by 2. The loop repeats the above steps until i is less than 9. In line 6, after the loop, the value of sum is printed. Let's go through the loop iterations. When i equals 0, i mod 4 is indeed 0, 0 is divisible by 4, so sum becomes 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Then, i is increment by 2, becoming 2. When i equals 2, i mod 4 is not 0, so there's no change to sum. Then, i is increment by 2, becoming 4. When i equals 4, i mod 4 is indeed 0, 4 is divisible by 4, so sum becomes 0 plus 4 is equal to 4. Then, i is increment by 2, becoming 6. When i equals 6, i mod 4 is not 0, so there's no change to sum. Then, i is increment by 2, becoming 8. When i equals 8, i mod 4 is indeed 0, 8 is divisible by 4, so sum becomes 4 plus 8 is equal to 12. Then, i is increment by 2, becoming 10. After this, the loop condition i less than 9 is no longer satisfied, so the loop ends. The final output of the code is 12. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 5. Now, look at the Python code. The outer for loop iterates through the values of x from 1 to 3, inclusive. Inside the outer loop, 
There's another nested for loop that iterates through the values of y from 2 to 4, inclusive. For each combination of x and y, the code checks if the product x asterisk y is greater than 10. If the condition is true, the break statement is executed, which exits the inner for loop. If the condition is false, the product x asterisk y is printed. Let's see the range of the for loop's outer for loop. Range of 1, 4. Start equals 1, stop equals 4, step equals default value 1, as step value is not given. Values of x are 1, 2, 3. Now, let's see the range of the inner for loop. Range of 2, 5. Start equals 2. Stop equals 5. Step equals default value 1, as step value is not given. Values of y are 2, 3, 4. Let's go through the loop iterations. When x equals 1 and y equals 2, x asterisk y is 1 times 2 is equal to 2, which is not greater than 10. So, 2 is printed. When x equals 1 and y equals 3, x asterisk y is 1 times 3 is equal to 3, still not greater than 10. So, 3 is printed. When x equals 1 and y equals 4, x asterisk y is 1 times 4 is equal to 4, still not greater than 10. So, 4 is printed. When x equals 2 and y equals 2, x asterisk y is 2 times 2 is equal to 4, still not greater than 10. So, 4 is printed. When x equals 2 and y equals 3, x asterisk y is 2 times 3 is equal to 6, still not greater than 10. So, 6 is printed. When x equals 2 and y equals 4, x asterisk y is 2 times 4 is equal to 8, still not greater than 10. So, 8 is printed. When x equals 3 and y equals 2, x asterisk y is 3 times 2 is equal to 6, still not greater than 10. So, 6 is printed. When x equals 3 and y equals 3, x asterisk y is 3 times 3 is equal to 9, still not greater than 10. So, 9 is printed. After these iterations, when x equals 3 and y equals 4, x asterisk y is 3 times 4 is equal to 12, which is now greater than 10. The inner for loop is exited using the break statement. So, the output of the code is 23446869. Question 5. Find the output of the following program segments. Subdivision 5. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, var is initialized to 7. In line 2, the while loop starts and continues as long as var is greater than 0. In line 3, inside the loop, the value of var, 7, is printed. In line 4, var is decremented by 1, so var becomes 6. In line 5, there's an if statement that checks if var is equal to 3. Since it's not, the loop continues. In line 8, inside the else block, another if statement checks if var is equal to 6. Since it is, in line 9, var is decremented by 1, making it 5, and in line 10, the continue statement is executed, skipping the rest of the loop body and immediately moving to the next iteration. No code after the continue statement in the current iteration is executed. The loop starts its second iteration. The value of var, 5, is printed. Var is decremented by 1, so var becomes 4. There's an if statement that checks if var is equal to 3. Since it's not, the loop continues. Inside the else block, there's no if condition that matches the value of var. The print, goodbye, statement is executed in this iteration. The loop starts its third iteration. The value of var, 4, is printed. Var is decremented by 1, so var becomes 3. The if statement's condition is met, var equals 3, so the loop is exited using the break statement, skipping the rest of the loop. So you can check the output on the console. Thanks for watching! 
Watch the upcoming videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated with engaging content and never miss out on my latest videos.